There's been a dramatic improvement in security in one part of Helmand following an Apache airstrike which hit an unexpected and valuable target. Our reporter James Banks has been given exclusive frontline access to D Company 5th Battalion, the Rifles, as they returned to the scene of the attack in Kopak in Nari Siraj. Well, James joins us live from Camp Bastion. Uh, James, tell us what's happened and what's changed. Well, earlier this month, whilst on a routine foot patrol, members of D Company 5 Rifles came under effective enemy fire from a group of insurgents. Uh, when the firefight had finished, they tracked one of these insurgents for over two hours. And when he once again became a threat, they had an Apache attack helicopter on standby to deliver a lethal strike. These photos capture the moments of that strike and the immediate aftermath. But what they didn't realise at the time was that this was no ordinary insurgent, but in fact a senior Taliban commander. So what's been the impact on the area? Well, security in the area has improved massively since then, and the insurgents have almost faded completely into the shadows. Uh, so much so, in fact, that I went to see the, the village where the strike took place earlier this month. The soldiers from D Company 5 Rifles have today been tasked to find, feel and understand the daily pattern of life here in the Kopak area of Nari Siraj. This patrol will focus on the village of Washirian, the site of a recent Apache strike that killed a senior Taliban commander. You got basically as far as those, uh, the white flags and, uh, and that's when we, um, we struck him with Apache air, air Hellfire missile. Um, we basically killed him on the spot. Uh, and then his body was kind of quasi or, or or picked up. And then there was about 30 individuals who were involved in that, uh, both to, uh, uh, a car and two motorbikes, which, you know, almost in kind of police escort fashion. A Taliban shrine now occupies the spot of the strike, but it was only after his death that troops discovered its significance and the impact it would have on the area. When we saw him shoot, it was just another guy firing at, with, uh, against us, but... Um, it is a good feeling at the end of the day to know you've, you've got a high level commander. It just puts pressure on, the, on the, the younger guys, the younger insurgents. And ever since that's happened, it's just been quiet. Nothing's been going on. It took away their morale and their will to fight. Uh, before his death, um, insurgents would, would engage us uh, from multiple fire positions, um, using multiple weapons. Uh, and afterwards, they, they really reverted to just disrupt shoot and shoot tactics where they'd take a couple of shots and then run away. Whilst the insurgents here no longer stand and fight, the area is still heavily IED'd and the soldiers often rely on local knowledge to show them the safest routes. Less overt insurgent tactics have also afforded patrols a greater freedom of movement, allowing them to gather more information on the local area and record biometric data of those they meet. We haven't pushed up here um, as frequently as we have liked and it's only in the last month we've been able to really exploit uh, up to this location and anyone who sort of basically fits the description of a fighting age male, um, if we have an opportunity, we will uh, enrol him. Insurgents may be on the back foot here in Kopak, but atmospherics on the ground can change in an instant, and the soldiers are always prepared to react if the situation becomes more hostile. Well, the patrol have just stopped two local nationals who are coming across this field and acting suspiciously. They've searched them, uh, and they're also asking them about some other suspicious movement that we've seen about 400 metres to the north. These men turned out to be farmers, but as we continued with the patrol, the sound of gunfire to the north and the suspected IEDs marked on our route reminded us that the job here in Kopak is far from complete. There's still uh, a significant amount of IEDs uh, and PB4AO is probably the most significantly IED'd um, AO within their south. Um, and uh, we've been launching lots of operations to clear those IEDs and we've suffered um, some casualties as a result, um, but we're improving um, local national freedom of movement, our own freedom of movement, and we're in a good position now to hold on to COPAC um, once the weather improves in the spring. The next step is to capitalise on the vacuum left by the death of the Taliban commander by bringing in Afghan security forces in order to build on the progress made by five rifles. James Banks, Forces News, Nari Siraj.